Welcome to the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television. Let's begin with the headlines. Overdraft limit for account holders under Pradhan Mantri Jandan Yojana doubled to 10,000 rupees. Free accident insurance cover also doubled to 2 lakh rupees as centre makes scheme open-ended. Finance Minister says rupee fall due to global factors. Defence cooperation and strategic partnership to be focus of inaugural 2 plus 2 dialogue between India and the United States today. Ministers Shishma Swaraj and Nirmala Sitaraman will hold talks with their US counterparts Mike Pompeo and James Mattis. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to be briefed later. Supreme Court may decide on petitions seeking decriminalization of consensual gay sex today. Five judge constitution bench headed by Chief Justice of India looking into consensual aspect of the 158-year-old law under Section 377 of the Indian Penal Code. Powerful 6.7 magnitude quake hits Japan's Akedo Island. Quake triggers landslides collapsing buildings. Several people reported missing. Power outage in 30 lakh households. Country already reeling under Typhoon Chevy. And 20 people, including two Afghan journalists, killed in twin blasts at a wrestling club in Kabul. 70 people wounded in powerful suicide blasts claimed by the Islamic State. Well, let's begin with our top focus on the bulletin this morning. The government has decided to make its flagship Pradhan Mantri Jandan Yojana open-ended with more incentives. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley announced this decision after the Union Cabinet meeting on Wednesday. Jaitley also ruled out any reason for panic over the fall of the rupee in relation to the dollar, which he pointed out was due to global factors. In the cabinet briefing on Wednesday, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley attributed the fall in the rupee to global factors and stressed that the rupee was doing better than other currencies. He said the government has consistently maintained 4% inflation during the last four years. We must bear in mind that in the last few months, dollar has strengthened against almost every currency. And therefore, most global currencies have weakened vis-a-vis -vis the dollar. As far as other currencies are concerned, the rupee has consistently either strengthened or remained in a range. It has not weakened qua any one of them. In fact, against uh, most of the other currencies in the world, compared to what it was four to five years ago, the rupee is better off. I can't say the same about dollar. On rise in petrol prices, Jaitley said that the international oil market is volatile at the moment and has failed to show any linear movement. He added that the rise in crude price is a temporary phenomena due to artificial shortages of the prevailing geopolitical situation. There is no straight line movement of global crude oil prices. They go up, they come down. In April there was a lot of pressure, in May there was a lot of pressure, they were going up, in June they came down, in July they came down. Then August onwards, there is again a movement. Last two days, there has been some moderation. For six days before that, there was a gain. So as I am saying, these are not situations uh, which uh, merit uh, knee-jerk and panic reactions. There are no straight-line movements in global oil prices. The government announced that the Pradhan Mantri Jandhan Yojana will be an open-ended scheme with more incentives to encourage people to open bank accounts. Free accident insurance cover for those opening accounts after August 28 has been doubled to rupees 2 lakh. Because this is a runaway success scheme, which has been so mass participation, we will continue to continue and in its terms and conditions, we will incentivize more of its success and its reach. जो पांच हजार रुपए का ओवरड्राफ्ट मिलता था, उसको अब दस हजार रुपए कर दिया जाएगा। 
उसमें से पैसा विड्रॉ करने के लिए कुछ कंडीशन होती थी कि महीने में कितनी बार कर सकते हो बैलेंस कितना होना चाहिए जो लोग 2000 तक विड्रॉ करेंगे उन पे कोई कंडीशन लागू नहीं होगी इसमें एवरेज एज एक्सपेक्टेंसी भी बड़ी है और इसलिए इसकी जो एज थी इंटाइटलमेंट की वो 18 से 60 वर्ष तक थी तो उस एज को और रिलैक्स कर दिया गया है और अब 18 से 65 वर्ष तक के लोग इसकी सुविधा ले सकते हैं The flagship financial inclusion program will now focus on opening account for every adult. Launched in August 2014, the first phase of the Pradhan Mantri Jan Dhan Yojana focused on opening basic bank accounts with inbuilt accident insurance cover of rupees one lakh. There are approximately 32.41 crore Jan Dhan accounts having a total deposit balance of rupees 81,200 crore. Among the other cabinet decisions are continuation of the centrally sponsored umbrella scheme of integrated development of wildlife habitats till 2019-20 aimed to boost tiger and elephant conservation efforts and clearance for proposal for establishing permanent campuses of seven new IIMs by June 2021 with Panchanan Mishra bureau report Rajya Sabha TV Well, moving on to our other big focus story for the day now India and the United States will engage in two plus two talks of foreign and defense ministers for the first time today the agenda will center around a global strategy to ensure a balance of power amid confrontation on trade and strategic issues between the world powers The 2 plus 2 meeting in Delhi will take place in three stages. The first will include a 1 plus 1 between respective foreign ministers Sushma Swaraj and Mike Pompeo and defense ministers Nirmala Sitaraman and James Mattis. The second session will have both foreign and defense ministers along with the respective delegation members jointly discussing issues from a bilateral perspective. The participants will then jointly apprise Prime Minister Narendra Modi of the result of the meet. Experts feel the initiative shows a deep desire on both sides to come together to tackle global challenges. The strategic issues, bilateral issues, regional issues uh, in a, a format of 2 plus 2 Uh, is itself a very powerful signal of the growing uh, importance of uh, uh, relationship the strategic partnership between india and the us strategy defense and trade are the three aspects of 2 plus 2 meetings between india and the us the meeting will also see discussions on issues related to pakistan afghanistan iran the middle east china and the indo pacific region India's defense purchases with its proposed S400 missile systems from the Russians is expected to be discussed. It's a question of needs. Hmm. Uh, something which uh, the US can supply, something which Russia can supply, something which uh, Israel can supply. And since as I said uh, the uh, Indian needs are quite uh, uh, strong and uh, uh, growing. So I'm sure uh, India can uh, do business both with uh, Russia as well as with the US. The US could ask India to stop oil purchases from Iran to which India will try to emphasize the importance of Indian presence in the region via Iran. The different dimensions of strategic partnership uh, US uh, and India they can work together. Uh, we we are important for to them in their global strategy and their regional strategy and they are important to us in our bilateral strategy and also regional strategy india on its own is expected to raise issues like cross border terrorism from pakistan and will urge the americans to tighten the noose further for complete dismantling of terror machines from pakistani territories the issue of h1b visa is also likely to figure in the talks This is the second biggest initiative after Jaswan Talbot to redefine India US relationship. It is natural when two big powers meet there might be some perceptional differences but convergences are many and it is a good initiative to redefine the convergences also. Akhilesh Suman for Raj Sabha Television with camera person Ashwini in Delhi. And ahead of the meeting US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has said that the US and India have big and strategic items to discuss during the 2 plus 2 dialogue. Pompeo asserted that the primary focus of the meeting was not about India's plans to buy a Russian missile defense system and oil from Iran. He further said that there are half a dozen things on the agenda 
that are big and strategic that the U.S. is really intent on making progress on. U.S. Secretary of uh, Defense James Mattis said that uh, the Trump administration recognizes the opportunity to grow the U.S.-India strategic partnership, deepen security relationship, broaden friendship and ensure a more safe, secure, prosperous and free Indo-Pacific region. He said the two sides will be looking at how to counter terrorism and increase defense innovation. And joining me for a chat right now is my colleague uh, Akhilesh Suman. Akhilesh, uh, big day today as far as India and the United States are concerned. What's on the table as far as the 2 plus 2 dialogue is concerned? Actually, Frank, it is not just a big day for the two countries, but it is a big day for all over the world because everyone is watching what is going on. And at around 2.30, when uh, the Foreign Minister of US and India will address the joint press conference, I think something will come out very clearly that what is the direction of the relationship. But uh, as a whole, I can tell you at this time that you know that strategic initiatives are too many between India and USA and there are too many convergences between the two countries. But you know that there are perceptional differences regarding Iran and Russia basically and there is a convergence uh, specifically on India Indo-Pacific region. So I think that's a big convergence uh, as far as India and US are concerned. India has been raising the question of right to free navigation in the Indo-Pacific region and India has been opposing consistently about the monopolistic attitude of any other country in the region because it is a region through which lots of trade uh, ships pass away. So you know in, in this context you know that uh, India and US have uh, great things to do. And as far as Iran and Russia is concerned, you know, that India is uh, uh, going to tell, uh, you know, US that, you know, Iran is very important uh, partner as far as the whole Middle East and also the whole Central Asia is concerned. And India has its own historical connections uh, with Iran and it can be in the benefit of a stabilization of the whole region. So India has this logic and it will be interesting to see that uh, how uh, the foreign and defense minister of America take this thing. And as far as Russia Russia is concerned, you know, that uh, US has always been uh, uh, very disturbed about India's relationship with Russia. But um, as, uh, as the things have evolved, US has also found that India has its own uh, uh, interest with Russia because the type of necessities India has, uh, only Russia has been fulfilling and you, you cannot expect any other countries to break ties right. with a country that has been historical, uh, having historical ties with you. So I think uh, US has a uh, uh, some understanding about this fact. But given the fact that there is, has been uh, monopolistic tendencies from China, this is also going to be one of the major issues both countries are going to discuss, Frank. And I think that results uh, will show that how it comes out. But India will try to pose itself as a power in this whole region, as a power to stabilize the world, and right. also as a power that can uh, create peace and tranquility without going into major confrontation. The you know, uh, U.S. I, I, has always been very keen about having military relationship with India. So it will be interesting to see that how far India commits to U.S. about having uh, active military uh, relationship because India has never accepted being part of NATO. But uh, U.S. Uh, priority mm -hmm. shows, uh, I was seeing uh, Mr. Mattis' statement and also Mr. Pompeo's statement, they are very keen to have very deep military tie-up and very deep defense tie-up with India. So uh, it will be interesting and it will. Be, I am really very curious to see that how this relationship, how expectations from both the sides are going to be fulfilled in this uh, meeting. And I think that this is not going to be the first meeting. This is the beginning of the uh, right. meeting. But uh, in the coming days and months, you know, that there will be a meeting of quadrilateral also. Uh, Mr. Pompeo has uh, signaled that in November at the time of East Asia Summit, mm -hmm. uh, there will be a meeting of quad between uh, India, US, Australia and Japan. That is also becoming a major... Right. That is also something to watch out to is what you're suggesting. Akhle Suman, thank you for joining us with those details there. Indeed, uh, the entire world is watching as to what's likely to happen as far as the 2 plus 2 dialogue is concerned. We will hopefully have some kind of a clarity at 2.30 uh, p.m. when a press conference is addressed by the foreign ministers of both the countries. Moving on, now in the midst of a raging political squabble over the purchase of 36 Rafale jets, the vice chief of the Indian Air Force said on Wednesday that the aircraft will give India unprecedented combat capabilities. 
Air Marshal S. B. Deo said those criticizing the deal must understand the procurement norms and policy. He also indicated unhappiness over the delay in delivery of indigenously developed light combat aircraft Tejas by the Hindustan Aeronautics Limited and suggested that private sector should be involved in its production. The Air, uh, Indian Air Force is reeling under shortage of combat aircraft. At present, it has 31 fighter squadrons against the authorized strength of 42 squadrons. Meanwhile, in uh, related news, the Supreme Court has uh, agreed to hear. And I shouldn't be, you know, speaking, I'm not authorized to volunteer information. So we just lumped it and it's not, you know, this kind of things. Uh, we're just waiting for this aircraft to come. Okay, it's a beautiful aircraft. It's a very, um, uh, very capable aircraft. And uh, it, it's a capability that we need very quickly. Meanwhile, in related news, the Supreme Court has agreed to hear next week a plea seeking a stay on the Rafale fighter jet deal between India and France. The court considered the submissions of advocate M.L. Sharma that his plea be listed for urgent hearing. In his petition, Sharma has alleged discrepancies in the fighter jet deal with France and sought a stay on it. With the government under attack from the opposition on the Rafale issue, the country's security brass on Wednesday briefed the Union Council of Ministers on the fighter aircraft deal with France in a bid to provide the leaders with facts to counter allegations. News reports suggest National Security Advisor Rajat Dawal and Defence Secretary Sanjay Mitra made a detailed presentation on various aspects of the deal in the meeting. The ministers were informed that it was a deal between the two governments involving no private party thus leaving little scope for corruption. India had inked an intergovernmental agreement with France in September 2016 for procurement of 36 Rafale fighter jets at a cost of around 58,000 crore rupees. The delivery of the jets is scheduled to begin from September 2019. Well, it's time for a short break now, but news and updates will continue on the other side. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Tales that inspire. Stories of social change. A salute to diversity. Promoting public discourse. Events that motivate. Inspiring the innovative spirit. Watch Rajya Sabha television documentaries. Welcome back. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television. Well, the Supreme Court may pronounce its much-awaited verdict on Section 377, which criminalizes consensual gay sex. On July 17th, a five-judge constitution bench headed by Chief Justice Deepak Mishra had reserved its verdict after hearing various stakeholders for four days. The bench also comprises Justices R.F. Nariman, A.M. Kanvilkar, D.Y. Chandrachud and Indu Malhotra. The center had earlier put the onus on the apex court on the issue, while the court had asserted that it cannot wait for a majoritarian government to decide on enacting, amending or striking down a law if it violates fundamental rights. The Supreme Court had in 2013 cancelled a 2009 Delhi High Court order that had decriminalized homosexuality by overturning the outdated law and said it was the job of parliament to decide on scrapping laws. Well, in other news now, Commerce and Industry Minister Suresh Prabhu on Wednesday launched the National Mission on Government e-Marketplace. The GEM platform provides online solution to procure commonly used goods and services for all central and state departments. The government on Wednesday launched the National Mission on Government e-Marketplace. Starting 6 September, the six-week special drive will be launched at the state headquarters by chief ministers. It will cover important sectors and flagship programs. It will also focus on buyer registration drive and vendor registration drive with special focus on MSMEs. छोटे-छोटे महिलाओं ने चलाए हुए जो हमारे सेल्फ हेल्प ग्रुप है उसको जो छोटे कारीगर हैं 
उनके लिए भी जीएम के माध्यम से अपने माल बेचने का मौका मिलेगा साथ ही में इसके साथ साथ जो छोटे उद्योग हैं उनको भी ज़्यादा बढ़ोतरी दी जाएगी और यदि इसके कोई दूसरा भी उसमें खरीदना चाहता है तो उसको भी उसमें खरीदने का मौका मिलेगा The national mission is expected to promote inclusiveness, transparency and efficiency in public procurement and achieve cashless, contactless and paperless transactions. This will increase overall efficiency and lead to cost saving on government expenditure in procurement. पूरी मात्रा में पारदर्शिता आने के कारण इसमें जो भी कोई गलत बातें होती थी उसको पूरी तरह से अभी अटका ला गया है और साथ ही में आने वाले दिनों में इसकी वजह से क्वालिटी में इम्प्रूवमेंट आ रहा है क्योंकि लोग भी खरीदेंगे तो पहले उसका वेरिफिकेशन होगा पहले वेरिफिकेशन करने की स्थिति अलग थी आज वेरिफिकेशन करना अलग है खरीदने वाला अलग है तो इसके लिए वो भी एक उसमें चीज आ गई द जी ई एम वॉज लॉन्च एज अ पायलट प्रोजेक्ट इन ऑगस्ट टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन टिल ऑगस्ट ट्वेंटी सिक्स टू थाउजेंड एटीन इट क्रॉस टेन थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड क्रोर इन वैल्यू टर्म्स एंड सिक्स पॉइंट नाइन सिक्स लैख इन वॉल्यूम ऑफ ट्रांजेक्शन थ्रू द प्लेटफॉर्म मोर देन वन पॉइंट थ्री फाइव लैख सेलर्स ऑफर फोर पॉइंट फोर थ्री लैख प्रोडक्ट्स ऑन दी जी ई एम प्लेटफॉर्म दैट हैज ट्वेंटी सिक्स थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड While all states and union territories are buying through GEM, 25 states and union territories have already signed an MOU to make procurement through GEM mandatory. It has led to an overall average saving in cost of procurement to the tune of about 25 percent. Kriti Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. A well, unique identification authority of India has asserted that schools cannot refuse admission to students for lack of Aadhaar. In a statement, the authority termed denial on such grounds as invalid. UIDAI said it is the responsibility of schools to provide Aadhaar enrollment and facility to their students. It has also exhorted schools to coordinate with local banks, post offices, state education department, and district administration to facilitate special camps in their premises for Aadhaar enrollment and updation. According to an official circular, the UIDAI has said that it is aware of instances where some schools. are refusing admission in absence of aadhar a well, draft bill for protection of the ganga has suggested formation of an armed ganga protection corps who will have powers to arrest those who pollute the river the gpc personnel will be provided by the ministry of home affairs and will be deployed by the national ganga rejuvenation authority other measures in the draft bill prepared by the ministry of water resources include prison term of up to 3 years and a fine of up to 5 lakh rupees for offences varying from commercial fishing to construction of illegal structures in active flood plains the draft has also said that the existing environmental laws are not adequate to restore and protect the 2500 km long river and has called for law enforcement to protect it Well, moving on now at least 5 people were killed and 11 others missing after a motorized boat carrying 40 passengers capsized in the Brahmaputra river near Guwahati at least 18 people were rescued while 11 others are still missing according to authorities the boat was on its way to north guwahati in kamrup district where its engine developed a technical fault and hit a rock assam chief minister has uh, instituted a high level inquiry into the capsize The district administration also opened helplines to get the information regarding the capsize. President Ramnath Kovin and Prime Minister Narendra Modi condoled the loss of lives in the accident. President Kovin tweeted that he is saddened and his thoughts are with those affected in the accident. While uh, Prime Minister Modi said that he was deeply saddened by the loss of lives due to the capsize of the boat. Well, President Ramnath Kovind will head to the Czech Republic today on the third leg of his three nation tour. On Wednesday, India and Bulgaria have signed four MOUs including one on civil nuclear cooperation as President Ramnath Kovind held talks with his Bulgarian counterpart Rumen Radev. President Kovind also invited the Balkan nation to become a key partner of India in the defense sector. After detailed talks between Presidents Kovind and Radev, four MOUs on investment, tourism, civil nuclear cooperation and the establishment of Hindi chair at Sofia University were signed. A program of uh, cooperation was also signed to enhance scientific cooperation. President Kovind arrived in Bulgaria on Tuesday on the second leg of his 8-day three-nation visit 
to Europe to continue India's high-level engagements with European countries. Bilateral trade between India and Bulgaria has grown 76% during 2016-17, but there is a lot of scope for expanding the current bilateral trade basket as well as for enhancing the quantum in the existing items of export and import. Bulgaria can become a key partner for India in the defense sector under our Make in India program and in technology intensive sectors such as IT, logistics and infrastructure under our Digital India and Smart Cities program. Indian companies are also keen to deepen their footprint in the Bulgarian market. A magnitude 6.7 earthquake struck Japan's northernmost main island of Hokkaido early today. The quake triggered landslides and caused power failure in nearly all the 3 million households. The nuclear power plant also was forced to go on backup generator. No tsunami warning has been issued. Several people were reported missing following the quake. Authorities received hundreds of calls about buildings collapsing. Rescue efforts are on. A crisis management task force has been set up at the Prime Minister's office. Three reactors at the Tomari nuclear plant were offline, but they are running on backup generators. The earthquake also affected telephone service and television broadcasting. Meanwhile, at least 20 people, including two Afghan journalists, were killed in twin blasts at a Kabul sporting club on Wednesday. Two journalists killed belong to the Tolo News, uh, which is Afghanistan's largest private broadcaster. 70 people were also injured in the latest attack in the war-torn country. The first explosion was triggered by a suicide bomber and was followed by a car bomb shortly after. The attack uh, took place at the Dasht a Barchi area, which primarily houses the Shia Muslim Hazara ethnic minority community. The Islamic State terrorist group has claimed responsibility for the attacks. Well, on to some sports news now, where Divyansh Singh Pawar and Shreya Agarwal have uh, won bronze in the 10 meters air rifle mixed team junior event on day four of the International Shooting Sports Federation World Championships in South Korea. Divyansh and Shreya finished at the fifth and final qualification spot among 42 teams with a score of 834.4 and then shot a combined 435 in the finals to clinch the third place. Italian pair of Sofia Benetti and Marco Supini won gold while Iran bagged the silver medal. India now has three uh, gold, three silver and three bronze medals in the competition, which is also its best ever showing at the ISSF. And now some news from the ongoing US Open, where Naomi Osaka of Japan defeated Ukraine's uh, Lesia Surenko 6-1, 6-1 to become the first Japanese yes. woman in 22 years to reach the semi-final stage of a Grand Slam. Osaka broke Surenko five times during a match that only lasted for 57 minutes. Osaka will next face the winner from Spain's Carla Suarez Novero and USA's Madison Keys. In the men's singles, another Japanese entered the semi finals. Kinishikori defeated Marin Cilic of Croatia 2 6 6 4 7 6 4 6 6 4 to make it to the semis. With that, it's a wrap on this telecast. See you again next time.